Welcome to Sarah Stamp and Retreat. Today I'm going to be showing you five different paper techniques that you can do with your pattern papers while we'll be making some really cool cards. And to do that I'll be using this kit that comes with the newest Hunky Dory magazine box kit. So I'll link that below. I'm just going to show you quickly what you get in the kit. So you get this die set with the two flowers and the butterfly. You get this embossing folder that's really nice, it's like a border and then the butterflies. So you do loads of different techniques with that. Then we've got this small stamp set with the flowers, happy birthday with special thanks and you're in my thoughts. And then we've got this big paper kit. And with most of these box kits you get like a paper pack in the middle of the magazine. But it's made with kind of like magazine weight paper. Whereas with the Hunky Dory kits, the paper pack's kind of the star, star of the show. And with most of the kits, you get kind of two different parts of the pack like this. You can see there's kind of like a yellow part and a blue part. And it's made of really good quality cardstock. And I think that's what Hunky Dory to me is most famous for, this adorable, scorable cardstock. So you can see all the toppers are really beautifully foiled and with most of these larger ones you get kind of the middle bit then you've got this silver frame and then you've got this frame around the outside and the same on this. And then you've got the smaller toppers and this border and then you've got another sheet here. So some really beautiful toppers in this kit. And then we've got four pieces of coordinating cardstock that go with this half of the pack. So we've got this one, this one, this one, and this one, and those are a heavyweight cardstock. And then you've also got paper pieces. So you've got two double sided papers. So we've got this one and this one. And then you've got these pieces which you can put inside your cards to kind of make that really posh insert inside or you could even kind of cut it up and just stick it inside to make a like nice look to the inside of a kind of a more normal card so you've got this one this one this one and this one and then the yellow half of the pack is kind of structured in the same way that you get two top of um sheets it's very much floral and butterfly theme and then for this one your cardstock pieces are this one this one, this one, and this one. You can see these are really structured in a very versatile way. So for example, you kind of cut off this bit and make a card front or cut it up this way, or you could cut this out and use this as a background. You could use these as borders. It's really very versatile. And your two papers on this side are this one and this one. And then we've got the insert, so we've got that one, this one, this one, and this one. You can see it's a really beautiful big paper kit. So let's get on and make some cards. For our first card, we are going to do some tea bag folding. So I've got a two and a half inch square of the pattern paper, and I'm going to just cut it from corner to corner. And I've done some of these in advance, but you need in total four of these squares, so eight of the triangles, to make up the kind of like flower shape we're going to make. And with all of them, I'm going to use this side here, so I need to put that down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these sides up to meet the top of the triangle. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to fold this fold into the middle of the triangle. So that's this fold here, then needs to go into the middle of the triangle. So we can turn that over and you can see we've got this shape. And then what I need to do is I'm going to lift, lift these two pieces up. And then what I'm going to do is just fold this into that centre line. And then I'm going to fold that back over that side. And I'm going to fold this into that centre line. And then I can fold those back out again. So then you're left with this. So let's do that once more so that you can be sure you really know what you're doing. So we're folding those bits up to the top. So I think with things like this, it takes a couple of times of seeing it to get what you're doing. Well, it does for me anyway. And then fold that up to the top. Then I'm going to fold this 
fold into the center so that will meet the line of the other one. I like to leave that folded up so that I know where I'm folding this into and then I'll leave that there so I know where I'm folding this side into. That way you know you're always folding into that middle line. I'm going to turn that over so you've got that and then I'm going to fold that one over that way. I'm going to fold this point here into the middle and I flap those back over and I fold this point into the middle. So then we've got this. So here are the other ones I've made. So we've got eight in total. And then what we want to do is just slot them together like that. And I want them to stay in place. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here. And then I just slot it in. So we want all of these diamonds to kind of like be pointing into the middle. So each time you're slotting them in, these pieces are just kind of getting snugly slotted together. And then when it comes to the last one, I'm just going to put a bit of glue on either side. So now we've got this really nice star shape or flower shape. So then I want to make this into a diamond pop-up card. So I've got a 5 inch by 10 inch card blank. So then I've got a 5 inch by 10 inch piece of navy cardstock. And then I'm going to score it at 5 inches. I'm then going to score it at 2.5 inches. And then on the side that doesn't have this score mark, so this side, I'm going to score two and a half inches along the side, so halfway along the side. But I'm only just going to mark it. You can see I made a little mark there. I'm going to score halfway along the top, so two and a half inches again. And then two and a half inches again. But all of these three, I'm not actually really scoring. I'm just making a little mark so I know where to score to. So I've got my three marks there. So then I'm going to join up this mark at the side with this mark at the top. And I'm going to cut that piece off. Then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm lining up this score mark with this score mark. I'm going to cut it off. Then I'm going to score from this score mark down here to this mark here. So I'm scoring in a big cross across the middle. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm scoring from this mark to this mark. So then what I can do is just fold along all those score lines. And then what I'm going to do is just push these pieces in like that. And that creates my diamond pop up. So then I've got a two and a quarter by four and three quarter inch piece of the same pattern paper. And I'm going to pop that on this bottom piece of card. And then I'm going to put glue onto this triangle here. And then I'm going to pop that down. Then I've got a two and three quarter inch piece of this green cardstock. And I'm going to glue on my flower. Then I'm going to pop out this little spread your wings sentiment circle here and I'm going to pop that in the middle of there and I'm going to use foam pads to pop that up. And then I can glue that onto the front of my card. And there we go, we've got this really pretty diamond pop-up card and then it folds flat to go in the envelope so it'll fit in a 5x5 five five envelope. So then for my next card, I'm going to use this large oval frame here. And do a bit of kind of freehand iris folding. So I've got a bunch of strips and what I'm going to do, because you want to see like a folded edge with this technique, I've got an inch wide strip of pattern paper. I'm scoring it at three quarters of an inch. I'm just folding over that score line. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of glue behind that. I don't think 
that many people do this but for me I find it makes it easier to work with so then we've got a bunch of strips and normally you would do this with like a template but I'm going to just go ahead and kind of freehand it so what we want to do is kind of fill in this oval with these strips so I'm going to start off with just covering small pieces so let's just add some glue around here and then I'm going to head that across there and actually I want to do it towards the end because then I can reuse some of this and then I'll add a piece across here So then I'm just going to grab my scissors and trim that off. So then I'm going to place that back on here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more glue on here. And I'm going to pop this across. So I'm using these lines as a guide. Where that intersects with that, I'm going across three essentially to intersect again. And then over here, I'm going to intersect one up from where it intersected previously. And you see then you get that pattern at the front. So it's important that we always start in the same place and go the same way around. So I'm going to go this way around, so I'm going to do this one next. I'm going to add some glue and then I'm going to go, and go three down. And you can always just check the other side to make sure it looks right if you're not sure what you're doing. It might actually be easier just to kind of add glue and then look from this side to see what you're doing. So then we can trim again. You could do all the trimming at the end but Quite honestly, it just gets a bit too thick to trim it nicely. So now I'm just kind of freestyling. So if you don't particularly like freestyling, there are loads of kind of templates on the internet that you can download to do this. And they're really good. It's just finding the right size and things for what you want. And I think it's quite easy to kind of eyeball how much you want. You can see that I'm sticking with the same pattern in each of the corners. But if you wanted, you could mix it all up or do it with all the same pattern all the way around. Just kind of play with it and create the type of patterns that you like. So now I've kind of used up all the strips that I've made. I'll have to see if I need some more after I've got to the middle. But for now I'm going to use the off cuts. So I'm just going to do a final trim of this round here. And although it's not as perfect as if we'd have used a template, we're going to put something over this middle piece anyway, so I don't think it really makes a difference. So then I've got a 12 inch by 5 inch piece of yellow cardstock, and I'm going to score it 6.5 inches. And I'm going to fold it in half. And then usually I would do this with a die, but because I don't have a die, the exact same size and shape as this oval then I'm going to draw around my oval and you can see that obviously where I cut the back shorter this part overhangs but that is so that you get a nice flat bottom at the back for it to stand on because if obviously if they were both curvy it's going to rock and roll so you'll notice that when I'm drawing my oval I've overlapped it a bit at the top, so this is my fold here, and that is obviously so that the card stays together at the top. So then I'm just going to 
draw around here and then I can cut it out obviously I want to cut just slightly within the line so that we don't see the card behind our topper so then now I've got this card blank with the piece at the back that is flat so that stands up nicely so then I'm going to glue this on So I'm just going to take this topper and I'm going to pop that up onto the foam pads and it can be made into a tag so there's a little circle so I'm going to make sure that one of them goes over the circle to keep that in. I don't want a hole in my topper. So then I've made a little bow with just a little bit of twine and I'm going to add that on with a glue dot. I'm popping that over that circle so that it's not obvious that it was a tag. And then I've got this especially for you. So I'm going to put a foam pad on this side and a bit of glue on this side. So then that's that card finished. It stands up like that. So then for my next card, I'm going to use this circle and I'm going to do some paper weaving. So I've cut strips of this that are about 3 eighths of an inch wide, so just a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to use some tape to stick it on because I find that I get in a bit of a sticky mess if I use glue for this technique. I'm just going to add a bit of tape around the outside. So then I'm just going to take the tape off just a little bit at a time. So I'm going to glue some pieces vertically first and I'm going to alternate the way that they are. So I've got two sets of strips, these ones are the floral with the gingham on the back and these ones are the butterfly floral with this on the back so I'm going to alternate them just within here so I'll do butterfly then this then butterfly then that then these ones will go down. I'm leaving a little gap between each one so that there's room to kind of thread the next layer through. So I'm going to trim these bits off here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these strips and I'm going to weave them in and out of the other ones. So I'm going to start over here and I'm weaving them over and under. And then I can secure it down. So then I'm going to use the reverse side. And this time I'm going to go over the ones I went under last time. And under the ones that I went over last time. So that helps you get that real like woven look to it. So you're just alternating the ones that you go over and under each time. So now we've got this woven pattern across there and obviously because we've used coordinating papers it matches really well with the frame. So then I want to make a circle easel card so I've got three five inch green circles and I'll put two of them to the side and with the other one I'm going to score it at half an inch and then I'm lining the score line up at two and a quarter inches so that's half of what is left of the circle so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold those I'm going to add a bit of glue above this small fold and that I'm going to glue onto this circle. Then that essentially makes up my easel card blank. Then I'm going to glue this onto this other circle. It's nice because then the green comes through the weaving as well. It kind of blends everything together nicely. So then I'm going to pop out this topper. And this one and then I don't know whether to use the pink smudge or the best wishes so let's just see how they lay up. 
think I prefer it with the oval there. So I'm going to lay them on like that. I do like with these where they've been die cut and they've just got those little nodules just to keep them in the um, pack. I like to go around and just trim those off a little bit. Let's just lay them out again so I can see where I want everything. So I'm going to lay these on. So I'm going to pop some of these fine pads behind the sentiment. So now that we've got that all layered up, we can glue it onto here. So I'm just going to cover this bottom section of this in glue. And then I'm going to add this one. So then I've cut half a circle that is about half an inch smaller than my card front. And then I'm just going to glue that in there. And then I want to add this on. So I'm going to add this piece on with some foam strips. So I'm going to rest that across there and then that will rest on there. And then I've die cut this yellow flower from the pair. And I want it to fit in with all the gold that I've got going on. So I'm going to use some of these Spellbinders Fashion Gold gems. And I'm just going to place those down the spine of the, or the body of the butterfly. And I think that helps it really fit in with the rest of the decorations. So then I'm just going to glue the body. Then we've got this really cool easel card. So then for this next card, we're going to create some little kind of paper straws to go on our card. And to do that, I've got a piece of paper that's five and three eighths by two and three quarters. And I'm just going to pop some tape along here. And this is the wrong side of my paper. I don't want to use this side. So then I'm going to use a pencil because I find that the easiest for rolling it and I'm going to roll it along like that. I want to make sure that I'm keeping the tops and the bottoms level with the rest of the paper and then I can just take the tape off and roll it up and then it's all nicely sealed and I can take the pencil out so then we've got our little roll and I'm going to do that again with this piece of blue paper. So then I've got my two paper straws. So this one's going to be quite a simple card. I've got an A6 navy card blank. So that is four and an eighth by five and seven eighths inches. And you can see it's a slightly damaged piece of cardstock, but we're going to pop this over the top. So if I know I'm going to cover most of the front, then I like to use anything that I've got that's damaged because you won't see it. So this piece is a quarter of an inch smaller than my card blank. And because they're a bit rounded, then I think it's going to be easier to attach these with tape. So I'm going to pop some tape over that join, so I know that that join is not going to be on the top. And then I'm going to pop these up here. And then I've just got a topper here that I'm going to pop up on some foam pads. And then I'm also just going to add on this little tag. I'm going to add a little bow to the tag as well. So I've just got some navy ribbon. Tie that with the colours. So let's add a glue dot behind there. And we can add that onto here. And then I'm just going to add some glue behind here. And then I'm going to add that onto these. So and that's a really nice simple card. Then for this next card, I've cut all of these circles just using layering circle dies from the pack, some um, navy cardstock 
and some silver mirror card and with these plain ones there's a couple that I'm going to back pieces of paper with and these ones I'm going to emboss with the embossing folder so I can do them all in one go and I'm just going to line them up down here in fact maybe I even put that one over the butterfly so that one bit has a butterfly on it and then I'll put that through my die cutting machine so now you can see we've got these beautifully embossed pieces so I'm going to layer up my card. So I have got a five inch square card blank made of navy cardstock. This is a piece of the cardstock from the pack as opposed to the paper. So that's from this piece of cardstock here. You can see that even though I've cut that piece out the middle, you still use this border here even for a longer card. And you've still got this really nice piece here. I think some people worry about cutting those pieces up because they're so detailed and really beautiful but actually they're still really usable if you're just careful about where you cut things from so then I'm going to glue this piece of paper which is two and a half inches by five inches onto this piece of cardstock which is two and three quarter inches by five inches and that is going to go onto our card and then I can start laying out these and see where I want them so then I've also got this piece of cardstock which I've obviously used the other corner for so some of those are these nice bits here that I've cut circles out of and I've cut this piece of gingham out there as well. But again, I've made sure to cut it along there so I can use that border. I can use the rest of the card store. And then I also wanted some butterflies for this card. So I've cut them out of the corner of this piece of card stock here. So I'm going to start gluing some of this down. And I'm going to use glue for some bits, foam pads for others. So we get lots of nice dimension within there. And then I've got this sentiment which I've popped out which I want to put across too so I need to make sure I'm leaving room for that to go across somewhere where it's not going to cut across like a butterfly or something so then I'm going to pop this sentiment piece up on foam heads before I add the rest of my little bits now that I'm just left with some top bits to add so that I know that that's in the place that I want it before I add my other pieces And then I'm going to go ahead and just see where I want all my other pieces. Then there's that card finished. So let's bring the other ones in. And I'm going to kind of flatten them down a bit rather than having them standing up so much because I know mean, it's difficult to see. So there are all of today's cards. Do let me know which is your favourite in the comments below. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd really appreciate you clicking like below and you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press the bell button and select all, then YouTube will also notify you when I've got a new video available. All of the products that I've used for today's cards are listed in the description below. And there's also a link there to my blog where you can find a picture supply list if that helps you find what you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon.